Now, what are analytics? Why do you need Google Analytics and combining it with Google My Business? Well, hopefully from previous videos, you know what Google My Business is. You've already claimed your business, but now you want to understand what do people do when they visit my website after going to, say, finding my website through Google Maps. Maybe they found me, they've, they've searched for someone locally, they found me, they've clicked on my website, but then I don't get the inquiry. They don't fill out the contact form or they don't pick up the phone. How can I find out what they actually do? Well, Google Analytics really delves in a bit deeper. I'm going to show you how you can combine Google My Business so that that information appears in Google Analytics in this video. But before I do that, it's good to just understand there's three types of people watching this video. There's the ostrich, there's the beaver, and there's the chimp. Now, the ostrich is the one that just buries his head in the sand. He gets on with his business. He's not interested in analytics. He doesn't really want to care about keywords. He just knows that people do come to his website from time to time and he'll respond when they come. And if you're one of those, which is over 50% of the businesses that can't really be bothered to look at analytics, they can't even be bothered to register their Google My Business or optimize it, well, then you may get a trickle of traffic, you may get referrals, and maybe your branding's strong enough to go that way for the next few years. And that's fine. But if you're a beaver, which is I'd consider more myself, you just want some information to respond to about your business. So you'll find that things like uh, Insight, uh, gives you that information. It tells you what people are doing. It tells you whether your branding is working. It tells you whether they find you through Google search or they find you through Google Maps. So that type of information can be really useful. And we'll see how that works in a moment as a beaver. Or maybe a beaver is one who just goes a bit more further, goes to Google Search Console, which again is a great tool that really gives you more information about your website and what keywords are being used and probably just gives you more information so that you can then respond to that when it comes to blogging and branding. But if you want a bit more detail, then you're probably more like the chimp who's scrutinizing the detail, that wants to nitpick into why do they do this? How do they do this? What can I do? How will that respond? So the detail is there where analytics comes in. Google Analytics gives you that information right down to the level, probably, a level you can't even imagine, you know, what browser they're using, whether they've converted or what time they bounced, where they went to. Now, most people would think that you can't get Google My Business to work with Google Analytics, but I'm going to show you exactly how you can do that. And finally, in this video, there's a really beautiful tool that few people seem to be using at the moment called Google Site Kit. And what it does, is it takes a bit of everything. It takes the information from your search console, it also combines it with some of the information from the analytics and it throws it into the back end of your WordPress website so that with just a simple plugin, you can get all that information from Google there and you can then respond to it on your website. So you're going to find all these really helpful as I delve into them now. So let's take a look and show you how these work. So if you're a beaver, then just using the analytics that come through Google My Business may be enough for you. You can respond to what you see. You can respond to some of the keywords and uh, some of the countries that you can see people are visiting your Google My Business reference on. So let me just show you how this works. You've got on the home page performance and there it just shows you the amount of views you've had in the last month, the searches you've had, and the activity. And that may just be enough for you to respond. I can see here, for example, that my search views have gone down and my map views have gone down. So I need to question why is that the case? But if you want more information than just this type of information you've got here, then you may want to just go to insights. And if you click on insights, you now start to see some of the uh, keywords that people are using to find you on Google My Business. So people are using Google, for example, and they come across me. Uh, they're using Google Maps, so they're, they're using my brand to find me too. So you might want to respond to those, create posts based on what is happening in those insight information. You also want to make sure you get a good balance of branded, direct 
and discovery. So these are people that know you, people that find you because your brand and people that find you by discovering you. And if you can get these three as we've got here uh, nicely balanced out, then you're getting a good balance of customers coming through. Some that know you, some that have discovered you. So that gives you kind of a good turnover of a balance of customers and clients and inquiries. As you go down the page, you've got a lot more information, which again is self-explanatory really, where phone calls are coming, how your photos, and I've, again, I've often said that photos are really important to produce traffic. So make sure you keep updating those. But of course, you can go into more detail. You can click on uh, more detail here if you want more information about how people are finding you. So that may be enough for you. Now, we're going to see in a moment that if you click on info, and if you wanted to add your URL to a UTM code, we're going to show you how to do that as well. And this is a really important part to the video if you're wanting to be more analytical. If you're, for example, wanting to be that chimpanzee that's delving into the detail, then this is going to be the part of the video that you'll need to follow in a moment. So look out for that, which is what we basically say is a reference to Google Analytics. So we'll look at that in a moment. But it could just be that this plus search console. So let's just go to Google search console. You may also feel as a beaver, this gives you a lot of information. It might not break down the Google My Business in detail. This is more about just your domain itself. So this won't give you the detail that analytics does, but it will certainly give you a lot of information that you can respond to and see how people are finding you and what's working for you. And really just as an overview, is my Google My Business, is it having an impact on my business? Am I getting more inquiries to my website? Well, the insight gives you that information and how they're doing it. But this gives you a bit more information about overall how it's having an impact because someone may discover me through Google Maps, but they may come back to me through Google search engine and my branding. So if I click on, say, open report here, this tells me a bit more information. I mean, I've been working a year ago. I had no SEO information applied to my website. So let's just see what we've got in 12 months. Apply that and I can look back on the history now. And there you go. So even six months ago, I was averaging, you know, there we've got 13 clicks on a Wednesday. Um, so not a huge, you know, 10 clicks. So not a huge amount of traffic at the beginning of this year or just the end of last year. But notice how now it's having a big impact as I go further and further up in my Google Maps, in the, the, the uh, map pack, uh, and the efforts I'm putting in to just a little bit of SEO here and there. And you'll notice that articles, blogging, mixing it with Google My Business, even here we see this article about being suspended. Um, obviously, people are interested in that. So you just notice it, in, it takes a while. If you're in it for the long term and doing it properly, then SEO can happen. So even though I thought SEO was a losing game, it is possible, but you have to just do things the right way and take your time. And unfortunately, it is a slow process. But now we see like in the last year, nearly four, three and a half million impressions. Uh, and now it's about improving the click through rate so that this then produces higher clicks. So that's another story altogether, which we can come on to in a different video. So in both cases, whether it's uh, Google search or search console or whether it's insights, they don't really give you the detail that analytics do. So let's just head over to analytics because we're going to see that analytics can be used to combine it with Google My Business so that you can find out a lot more detail. You can find out the bounce rate. You can find out the average session. You can find out whether your goals are being completed. Now, I've not set up my analytics with my website on here. So that's something that I'm going to do. That's one of the reasons I'm making this video because I think it's important to do this. But I'm just going to give you an idea as to how it works. So once you've set up analytics um, with your website, which I've got here, then all you need to do is you'll need to then go to acquisition or traffic source medium and that's where then things like google my business will appear if you put the following url so what's that url well the url is easy enough to do if i click on my website then you'll notice if i do a search for zanet design you'll notice here at the moment on website you'll see down the bottom here that it's zanet.co.uk and if someone does click on my website from google my business then all that does is it records it in Google um, Insight. It records it here that someone found me um, when we go to the Insights Day. You see, that's recorded there. But what I want is to know a bit more information. Where do they go once they go to my website? 
And that's what analytics does. It will give you a lot more information about where they go and what they've done once they arrive. So how do we get this to talk to Google Analytics? Well, the easy way to do that, okay, this is called Google Analytics URL Builder. And it works pretty straightforward because what it does, it builds a UTM code for you. And all you need to do is fill in the information here. So if I did one earlier, if I click on Google My Business, so the source, I'm just gonna call it GMB. Um, Medium's organic. You can add these in if you need to. The content is a listing. I've called it GMB1 as a campaign. And most of these things aren't really relevant. What you're particularly interested in is just you want to make sure that in that in that UTM, that, that bit of information there, that the GMB is part of the campaign or GMB1 is part of the campaign and that the source also is GMB. And then once you've copied that URL, and then if I go to my Google GMB and click on website here, so click on that, and I'm going to add this on the end of the website. So just copied and pasted that. So this query then goes to the end of the website and if I click apply, and so that's it really, then click apply and that information then will be passed on through Google. So what will happen in effect is this now will have that UTM involved, that tracking code involved for Google Ads or Analytics, uh, so not Ads, Analytics, and that will be picked up. So then over time, this information then here will be filled by means of whoever clicks through. Anything to do with Google My Business, we picked up through that particular setting. So how do you get this Google Analytics URL builder? Well, there's one you can get that's in Chrome Web Store, so I'll leave the details below, but basically it's called Google Analytics URL builder. And you just add it into Chrome, and then the way it works is you just go to the page you want and it will build it for you. And kind of explains it here in detail that it captures the URL automatically, that you can have a docked version or you can have a standalone version, that you can force lowercase if that's your thing, you can also use some short short codes um, to make it easier to copy and paste if needed. But that's uh, self-explanatory, pretty easy to use as well. But I've also left my favorite till last, and it's not Insights, it's not Analytics, and it's not Search Console, but it's actually when you combine them all together. So if you've got SiteKit on your site, so if you've got a WordPress website, you can download SiteKit as a plugin, it integrates really nicely into WordPress. And there will provide um, all of your information really from those, so the search console, the analytics, and so on. So if I just uh, look at my settings, for example, you'll notice that you can set it up relatively easy because if you've got one of these set up already, the others tend to, to kind of all make sense as well. So if I click on search console, for example, then this gives me the information again, but I can drill through it. I can take things on and off see how things are progressing and so on. So this is having really Search Console built into your WordPress website and you can kind of work with it a little bit easier because if there's changes needed, then of course you can make them still within the WordPress um, admin. So that can be useful. Um, but on top of that as well, if you go to the dashboard, it just keeps you up to date with what things are happening. Now, so my analytics, I haven't set up correctly. I've just changed it on here. And so at the moment, I haven't got the information coming through. But even things like page speed comes through as well, which is really important. So for a beaver, I'd say insights and search console are great. For a, a chimp, analytics is probably the way to go and adding a UTM URL as well. Uh, but if you want the best of everything and you're not sure whether you're a beaver on one occasion or a chimp on the other, then Sidekick gives you everything and you can drill in from there as well, which I'd thoroughly recommend. So simply put, if you just type in Sidekick into plugins for WordPress and then download it and then you set it up with your account and then you'll find that it's pretty straightforward really. 